Hello and welcome to the first part of a walking talking mock lesson um, focusing on AQA English language paper one section A and section B so the whole paper uh, the first part I'm going to be talking through the questions uh, approaches to the questions timings some general tips and advice and a couple of tips and tricks and in the second part uh, or part two that will be coming later I'll be going through each question going through some model examples um, and some pitfalls that you may have fallen into when attempting the exam paper. So just to summarize, this will be really good practice um, for your AQA English language paper one. Um, as I go through the video, what you should do is you should pause after I've spoken through the intro to each question and allocate the time recommended to attempt the question. Now, obviously, as it is a practice, um, it depends how accurate you want this practice to be. You can spend obviously more time than that allocated if you just want to give your absolute best attempt at each question, regardless of the time that's allowed for you. Um, or if you wanna be really strict with yourself, um, be, be really tight on the time. And if you go over, stop, go on to the next question. But obviously once you've finished answering the question or you've had the time, um, resume the video and then carry on to the next question. So AQA English language paper one, we're just gonna start with a brief overview. So the paper is worth approximately 50% of the marks overall completely equal with paper two and they're they're nigh on identical in terms of the layout and the structure the only difference is one is fiction uh, the second paper is focused on two non-fiction extracts and the structure of the questions is slightly different as well although there is a crossover with some of them so you have an hour and 45 minutes for this exam unless of course you're entitled to extra time um, it is quite a hard exam in terms of timing uh, as long as you are conscious of the time and you spend the right amount of time on each question, you can be quite successful with this exam. The order in which you do the questions is obviously quite important. Um, I personally recommend my students to start with um, going backwards. So do the writing section first as it's worth half the marks for the paper and then go on to question four, three, two and one, etc. But you can go with whatever works for you. I know some students like to do question one first because it's really simple and easy. And then they might go on to question four, um, then do question three and question two, and then do the writing section. It's really up to you. However, I would certainly prioritize um, the harder questions first and the questions that are worth the most marks first. A common pitfall that students fall into, they spend far too long on, for example, question two, and then don't leave themselves enough time for question four. And that is quite a bad mistake to make because question four is worth 20 marks, so it's a quarter of the paper, um, whereas question two is only worth eight marks out of a possible 80, so only 10%. So you do have to be really conscious of your timing and the order in which you do the questions. So just a quick overview of the specific questions and sections. So this is section A. Uh, you're given an extract from a 19th, 20, or 19th or 20th century uh, story or short story they are extremely random so in the years that this specification has been running um, i think from 2015 we've had a, a, a wide variety of different extracts and they've all been completely different um, complete chance if it happens to be from a book or short story that you've already read it's most likely going to be something you've never seen before and that's what the exam board want they're really english language is about testing your ability on the day to analyze the language that's in front of you, which is obviously opposed to literature where we prepare the texts and we have um, a good understanding of them before we even get into the exam. Question one. So question one asks you to read a specific section. It might be, for example, lines one to 10, and then you'll be asked to pick out four things you learn about something. Um, and it's worth four marks. You should spend approximately five minutes on this. Question two is read again a specific section, normally a bit larger and answer a question on language. Normally in the exam paper, they will um, cut this section out of the extract and put it on the um, question paper for you to make it easier so you're not going backwards and forwards between the extract and the paper. That's worth eight marks and you should probably spend about 10 minutes. Question three is to read the whole text and answer a question about structure. One of the hardest questions on the paper because you do have to refer to the whole text, yet, it's only worth eight marks, and that means you roughly spend 10 minutes. So it's quite a lot to do in only 10 minutes. I'll talk a bit more about that in a second. Question four is to read a specific section and state analytically whether you agree with the opinion of a student on the text using quotations. 
And that's worth 20 marks. Arguably the most important question on the paper because of the weighting of the marks, um, secondarily to the descriptive writing. So talking through section A, just going to go through timings. So you should start the exam by, I'd probably recommend quickly looking over all of the questions and then spending five to 10 minutes reading the extract. You do want to do that as quickly as possible in order to give yourself a, enough time on the questions that you're presented with. You can, if you want to, highlight any powerful quotations on your first reading to try and save some time later down the line. Some of those quotations might well be usable for question two, three, or four. So that's just a little tip to try and save a bit of time. Question one, as I said before, five minutes can be done quicker to allow more time on high mark questions. It's normally quite simple. The thing to be really careful of is to make sure that everything you write down is specific to what it's asking you to. So if it's asking you to talk about, in this example, say, Rosabel, make sure that everything links to Rosabel and that it's not about something else. Can, you can fall into that trap easily. Um, question two, read the section of the text indicated and answer the question. Eight marks available, 10 minutes. Use no more than 15 minutes. If you do go over 10 minutes, time will need to be taken from another question. That's something to consider through this whole exam. If you take more time on a question, it has to come off of another one. So be really conscious of that. Question three, as I said before, one of the hardest questions on the paper because it does ask you to refer to the whole text. Um, it's hard to stick the time into question due to needing to refer to the whole source. So skim and scan where possible. What I'd recommend, because this is very much, um, this question is very much about talking through um, the whole extract, how it changes and develops, um, how things shift and change, how our perspective changes, etc. Maybe pick out an example from each paragraph, or if there's not many paragraphs, a couple of examples, sort of a third of the way through, two thirds of the way through, and then the final third. Um, and that's sort of a good way to go about doing that question. And the question four, um, it's 20 marks. It's focused on a section, but it tends to be roughly a half of the whole extract, so over the first half or the second half, um, or the middle section. 20 to 25 minutes It's the most important question in section A because of the marks available. Um, so make sure you prioritize this question. That's why I've color coded them in terms of um, importance. So red being the most important, etc. cetera. Um, moving on. So big, 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 but simple piece of advice here. Always remember to read the question carefully. I mentioned the importance of it for question one, but it's important for all of the questions. Exams are quite simple if you, if you think about them in simple terms. Read the question that's being asked of you and you're answering the question. Sometimes all the strategies that we're taught can cloud our sort of thinking when we're doing these exams and we forget to focus on the most essential thing, which is to answer the question that we're being asked. Okay, so today's paper is um, from the 2017 June series. Um, it's AQA English Language Paper 1. This is what the front of the paper will look like when you attempt it. Um, and obviously in your actual exam, they, the school will guide you for this, but do make sure that you put your centre number, candidate number, um, surname, forename, etc. They all need to be filled in appropriately. And just read the instructions in that time you have before the exam starts carefully, just to make sure you're doing everything you need to do, that you've got the right pen, um, that you're not writing your outs answers outside of the sections they're asking you to do. Um, it tells you the marks that are available, etc. And it has some advice at the bottom there. It says you're advised to spend about 15 minutes reading through the source. Um, that's 15 minutes total. So that doesn't mean 15 minutes at the start, you know, read it quickly at the start. And then the other reading time is when you come to each question individually. Um, and that last bit of advice is actually really important. Leave enough time to check your answers especially important your descriptive writing um, or question five option um, that one has you have to proofread your work because that gives you the opportunity to improve sections of it add words in that make it sound more powerful check your punctuation um, so on and so forth so many students i've taught over the years do not do that and i cannot emphasize how important that is to proofread so um the section b you probably you've got roughly 50 minutes i mean write for between 35 and 40 minutes and the rest of the time should be proofreading and improving what you have written okay it's very much quality over the quantity don't write five pages of drivel that gets very boring as it goes on much rather have two fantastically written pages even if there's bits scribbled out and words added in 
that's going to be far more beneficial to you. Okay, so you should now spend uh, 10 minutes reading through the extract, which I'm going to pop onto now. So 10 minutes, between five and 10 minutes, reading through this extract, read through it as quickly and, com and competently as you can, reread sections if you do need to. Um, for your benefit, um, by all means, pause this video now and do it yourself, but I'm gonna read this extract um, and then we're gonna move on to the question. So source A, this extract is from the beginning of a short story by Catherine Mansfield. It is the early 1900s and Rosabelle, a lower class girl who works in a hat shop, is on her way home. At the corner of Oxford Circus, Rosabelle bought a bunch of violets. And that was practically the reason why she had so little tea. For a scone and a boiled egg and a cup of cocoa are not sufficient after a hard day's work in a hat shop. As she swung onto the step of the bus, grabbed her skirt with one hand and clung to the railing with the other, Rosabelle thought she would have sacrificed her soul for a good dinner, something hot and strong and filling. Rosabelle looked out of the windows. The street was blurred and misty. The light striking on the panes turned their dullness to opal and silver, and the jeweler's shops seen through this were fairy palaces. Her feet were horribly wet, and she knew the bottom of her skirt and petticoat would be coated with black, greasy mud. There was a sickening smell of warm humanity. It seemed to be oozing out of everybody in the bus, and everybody had the same expression, sitting so still, staring in front of them. Rosabelle stirred suddenly and unfastened the two top buttons of her coat. She felt almost stifled. Through her half-closed eyes, the whole row of people in the opposite seat seemed to resolve into one meaningless staring face. She began to think of all that had happened during the day. Would she ever forget that awful woman in the grey Macintosh, or the girl who had tried on every hat in the shop and then said she would call in tomorrow and decide definitely? Rosabelle could not help smiling. The excuse was worn so thin. But there had been one other, a girl with beautiful red hair and a white skin and eyes the colour of that green ribbon shot with gold they had got from Paris last week. Rosabelle had seen her carriage at the door. A man had come in with her, quite a young man, and so well dressed. What is it exactly that I want, Harry? she had asked, as Rosabelle took the pins out of her hat, untied her veil and gave her a hand mirror. You must have a black hat, he had answered. A black hat with a feather that goes right round it and then round your neck and ties in a bow under your chin and a decent sized feather. The girl glanced at Rosabelle laughingly. Have you any hats like that? They had been very hard to please. Harry would demand the impossible, and Rosabelle was almost in despair. Then she remembered the big untouched box upstairs. Oh, one moment, please, madam, she had said. I think perhaps I can show you something that will please you better. She had run up breathlessly, cut the cords, scattered the tissue paper, and yes, there was the very hat, rather large, soft, with a great curled feather, and the black velvet rose nothing else. They had been charmed. The girl had put it on and then handed it to Rosabelle. Let me see how it looks on you, she said. Okay, so that's the extract. As you see, I read it very, very quickly. And hopefully you can see that you don't necessarily need 10 minutes unless you're a slow reader, in which case you probably may end up having extra time anyway. So question one, read again the first part of the source from lines one to five. List four things about Rosabelle from this part of the source. To make your life easier here, I'd recommend just drawing a little line between lines one to five in the margin on the extract to make your life easier, and make sure you absolutely do not pick a detail from line five, um, six onwards. They must be from within lines one to five. The second thing is make sure that the points you pick out are specifically about Rosabelle, and make sure you write in full sentences. You can be awarded multiple marks on one line. So say, for example, on line one of your answer booklet, you've actually included two details about Rosabelle in what you've written. You will be awarded marks for both. It is not, it is not one mark per line. Um, and the second reason why you should make sure you don't just give a very simple one or two word answer is because if you're not specific that it's about Rosabelle, you may not necessarily be awarded a mark. So if you just say, for example, green hat, it doesn't really tell you anything about Rosabelle, and you're not going to be an awarded a mark for it. So four marks, no more than five minutes. You can actually find that you do spend a bit less on this question, which is good because you can have more time for the other questions. So pause the video now and give this question an attempt. Okay, we're going to move on to question two now. So question two, you should spend approximately 10 minutes on this question. You can write one large paragraph. So 
You may have been taught or been told to do separate P paragraphs or whatever writing structure you use, um, but that can be quite time consuming. In fact, some of the best responses that I've marked over the years that I've taught this paper tend to have all of their answers um, or analysis in one large paragraph. That helps the students save time, but it also really helps them to connect their ideas together, which is gonna get them towards the top end of the mark scheme. The really key thing is make sure you explain and expand on the effects of as many examples as possible. As a rough guide, I've said between five and six examples from the small um, extracts they've given you in this question. So what I mean by that is explain the effect um, of the words and phrases you've changed out, or the language features, and then maybe expand on it. What else does it show? So a couple more pieces of advice here to go through. So read the extract carefully, highlight any effective sentences, words, or phrases. As you do that, think about why they have chosen these language devices and the effect on you as a reader. Choose five to six words or phrases you feel comfortable analyzing and make sure that you zoom in on connotations, alternative meanings, inferred and implicit ideas. So the hidden meanings and ideas um, within um, the phrases you've chosen out. So just gonna go back to the question very quickly. So the question you've got is, look in detail at this extract from line six to 14 of the source. The extract is in front of you. And then the question is, how does the writer use language here to describe Rosabelle's bus journey home? You could include the writer's choice of words and phrases, language features and techniques, sentence forms. If possible, try and focus on all three bullet points. So find some language features and techniques, find words and phrases, and maybe find something about the sentence structures that you can talk about as well. So you have 10 minutes to answer that question. Pause the video now and give yourself 10 minutes to answer that question. Okay, so we're gonna move on to question three now, which I would probably say is the hardest question on the whole paper. So the question is, you now need to think about the whole of the source. The text is from the beginning of a short story. How has the writer structured the text to interest you as a reader? You could write about what the writer focuses your attention on at the beginning of the source, how and why the writer changes this focus as the source develops, and any other structural features that interest you. Absolutely, the bullet points here are key. So you should open by talking about what we are focused on at the beginning and why and how that's achieved. So what techniques and methods are being used by the writer that help us focus and why? And then how does that change as the extract develops? So in the next paragraph or the next section, how um, have things changed? Has our perspective changed? Has the atmosphere changed? Has the tone changed? What evidence is there to support that? That is how your answer should go. Think of it almost as if it's sort of a cross between a summary and an analysis. You're not doing the very close word and phrase level analysis you do for question two. It's much more of an overall structure analysis um, and a commentary, if you like, on the extract. So a few things we can talk about for this question. Um, how it begins, develops and ends. How perspectives might change and shift, and that certainly happens in this extract. How the topic might change or shift. How the paragraph lengths might um, get larger or smaller and what the impact of that is. Does it affect the tone, mood or atmosphere? And then we can also look at sentence lengths and how they might vary and change and add to the overall effect on us as a reader. A few things we can talk about uh, sentence starters. So you might say things like the text is structured, etc., around the middle of the extract, the topic shift, and towards the end, just a few sentence starters there that might help you. So pause the video now, give yourself 10 minutes to answer question three. If you take a little bit longer, that's absolutely fine. Just remember that time must come off of another question. Okay, so we're on to question four, which is arguably the most important question on the whole paper now. So the question is, Focus this part of your answer on the second part of the source from line 19 to the end. Just as I said before in a previous question, you should draw a line from line 19 to the bottom of the extract um, on the left hand side or right hand side to ensure you're only getting your information from that section. So a student said, this part of the story set in the hat shop shows that the red haired girl had, has many advantages in life. And I think Rosabelle is right to be angry. To what extent do you agree? In your response, you could. Consider your own impressions of the red-haired girl, 
evaluate how the writer conveys Rosabelle's reactions to the red-haired girl, and support your response with references to the text. As mentioned previously, those bullet points are key. What are your impressions of Rosabelle? What techniques and methods has the writer used to convey those impressions or give those impressions? So language techniques, words and phrases, structure, all of those things. And then make sure you're giving those examples in your response. As a guide, you should spend 20 to 25 minutes on this question. Again, I'd go for probably six or more examples analysed, focusing on how the writer conveys the character and what techniques is the writer using to achieve this. And again, just make sure you cover each of the bullet points. Further advice to think about with this question. So to start with, find the advice that either supports or disagrees with the statement. You may have been told to always agree with this statement. That is not necessarily correct. You may find things that actually disagree with the statement. As long as you can support that and argue that effectively, that's absolutely the right thing to do. I've marked many examples over the years where the students have presented a balanced argument of agree and disagree. And some of the disagree examples have been absolutely fantastic. And actually, that's what's elevated them into the higher marks of the mark scheme because they've been perceptive in their analysis. Six or more examples is roughly a good number. And some questions to consider for this question when you attempt it. Why does or why doesn't the quotation justify Rosabelle's anger? What impression does it give you of the character? How has the writer created these impressions? And is there an alternative interpretation of the evidence that you are analysing? If you think about those questions when you're writing all of your analysis, you're certainly going to be well on your way to achieving some good marks in this exam, or for this question, should I say. So you should pause the video now and give yourself 20 to 25 minutes to answer that question. If you need to, if you're doing this from home, take a break. If you feel that's the right thing to do, it's a practice. You don't need to do this in one go unless you've been specifically told to. OK, so we're on to the final section now. And this is completely different to the section uh, to section A, which is focused on analysis and your reading comprehension and, and understanding skills. And this is much more about your creative skills, arguably my favourite part of English, certainly when I was younger and growing up, um, is the ability to use my skills and knowledge to create something interesting for someone else to read. So here is a question. Your local newspaper is running a creative writing competition and they intend to publish the winning entries. That top part is not that important. The next part is either describe a journey by bus as suggested by this picture or write a story about two people from very different backgrounds. Now, which option you go for is entirely up to you. But play to your strengths. You should have an understanding of what you're good at and what you're not good at. Some students are fantastic with the option where you are not given an image. They've got excellent imaginations and they're able to plan and structure a really effective story or description. But sometimes people fall into the trap of going for the option that, um, for example, that doesn't have the picture, the bottom option, and they run out of ideas halfway through or they haven't planned properly, or they end up going into a really bland, boring sort of narrative that loses powerful vocabulary and effective language and description. It might turn into sort of a, a dialogue fest, so to speak, um, and it ends up being quite boring for the examiner to mark, and it costs them. Some of the perks to choosing the image is that you actually have something in front of you that you can use to write your response. Um, so you can pick out ideas in the image, and also the image acts, acts as sort of a starting point. There's a lot more in your imagination that's going on outside of this image that you can use. The image can be really helpful um, to give you almost like a head start. I'd argue there's sort of less to worry and plan about if you're using the image. On the other hand, you might find the image sort of curtails you a little bit and holds you back because you're, you're not fully allowed to use your imagination. A few ideas. So if you're using the image, I'd absolutely recommend circling things that you can describe or zoom in on. So I've circled a few things here that you could describe in this picture. You might describe faces the people around you the woman slumped in her chair nattering away on the phone what is the conversation she's having the woman who's staring at you through the screen or staring out the window why is she staring out the window what's happened to her is that you you might put yourself in the shoes of that person things that are going on outside of the bus the hustle and bustle the bright lights um the extreme pace of people walking around 
um, the scenery. There's so much that you can describe just from this very small image. Circling things will help you have an idea in your head of what you're going to talk about. The more important part of planning, um, and this is applicable for either option for me, is vocabulary planning. One of the key things for this question is your vocabulary. That can really elevate the most basic of plot lines into a fantastic read. So one thing I get my students to do is to do vocabulary planning, which is to think about verbs, adverbs, nouns, and adjectives that you're going to be using. These are the fundamentals of writing good creative writing. So we've got to have a variety of verbs accompanying that some carefully thought out adverbs. We need to think about the objects we're mentioning and then importantly, how we're describing them. So what adjectives are we gonna to use to describe them? Now I've given a few random examples here that I just happen to think of looking at the picture, but you're probably gonna get completely different um, examples in your own head from that image that you've got or you're presented with. But writing these down before you start can just make you help, help you to think about the importance of your vocabulary and then to include it actually in your writing. And then the other thing that you could perhaps do is to think about your sensory imagery. And that's really good, especially if you're trying to be extremely descriptive. So to think about all of the senses, sight, sound, taste, touch, smell. These are the things that really bring um, a piece of creative writing to life. I would say don't overdo it on the senses. That can be a trap. That can actually prevent you from getting into those top marks because your story might lack development as a result of focusing too much on, on the senses but they will certainly help you to create imagery and atmosphere for the reader. So you might just want to do a very quick census plan to help you. And lastly, you might just do a five point plan. So five things that you're going to talk about in your description. Anyway, I would probably recommend 50 minutes for that question, but actually aim for around 40 and then spend 10 minutes proofreading your work very carefully, going back over your answers and ideas, adding words in if needed, changing sentences around, crossing bits out that don't make sense, edit your work. It matters, it can elevate you two, three, four, five, more, even more marks if you do your editing effectively. Okay, so there we go. There's part one of the English language AQA um, paper one mock. There will be a part two coming at some point and that will be going through um, some of the examiner's reports and some perhaps model examples. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful.